Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and if you've been watching my videos re recently you've noticed that I've been playing around with iOS V that's the image extracted out of the one PK Cisco all-in-one virtual machine. W works really well but it's kind of a pain in the ass to run inside a VMware workstation. I know a lot of you are used to GNS3 so we're gonna run it inside of GNS3. It's really really easy and first of all Make sure you've got your image somewhere safe, somewhere nice like Dropbox so all your machines can, can look at it. Then inside of GNS3, make sure you're running either 8.6 or 8.7 if you're watching this in September 2014. If you're running beta 1 or beta 2 of GNS 1.0, this is not going to work for you because you need QEMU to run this image. So don't worry about it. Just wait a month or so if you really want to run 1.0 and it should be out. All right, so I'm running 8.6. I'm just a little, little bit behind, but that's okay. We're going to go into Edit and Preferences. And you're going to need to click down here to QEMU and just quickly test the settings and make sure QEMU comes up green. All components have successfully started. So that's great. If it bombs out, you're going to need to fix that. And this video is will be nowhere near as long enough to cover all the problems that you could possibly face. So just hopefully it, it's green before you continue. Then you're going to click on QEMU Guest. And you're going to need to find your image. This is where it's going to pull that VMDK file. And cool thing is we can run a VMDK file natively inside of QEMU. So click on the three dots here. We're going to need to find the image and I placed it inside of my Dropbox. There it is. And for the flavor, we're going to click x86 64-bit. Identify your name, we're going to call it VIOS or iOS V or whatever you want to call it. For the RAM, I'm going to give it 512 megs. 384 will also work. I just give it 512 because it gives me the warm and fuzzy feeling. Number of NICs, you can leave it at 6 if you want. It's fine. The NIC model number, you're going to go E1000, and then you don't need anything else. Click on Save, and it's going to save down here, and then click OK. All right, moment of truth, we're going to click on these icons here. We're going to drag in QEMU Guest. We're going to drag in 1, drag in 2, oh, what the hell, we'll drag in 3. Then we're going to link everything up, E00, E00, E1 to E0 and E1 to E1. Just screwing around here. Make sure everything is labeled. Click on play. All three routers are going to come up, which is pretty nice. Boom, boom. Very good. And let's take a look at our task manager. All right. And we're going to minimize our QEMU windows there. Ooh, little little sluggish there. I'm maxing out one of the cores. We're going to wait for that to calm down a little bit. And now we're going to console into all devices. Let's see if this is going to work. Console connect to all devices. Let's arrange our windows kind of like that. All right. Hit enter a couple times on our Telnet windows, and we're just going to wait a couple of seconds. Okay, we are back, and actually I waited for about a minute and a half for the three routers to come up. And basically the single core out of the the four, or the eight logical ones, but the, one, of the, one of the cores was just maxed out. So I'm guessing inside of Windows, QEMU just slams everything into a single core. I'd be interested to see how this works on the Linux GNS3. It's probably going to be much better. Okay, let's go no on all these initial configuration dialog boxes, dialog windows. And let's see what happens here. Got a nice scary <laughs> a scary error message. FAT16 DOS signature not found. Wow. Okay, but it finally gets past that. There we go, we got our router prompt on router 1. OK, 
Okay, while I'm waiting for the other routers to come up, I'll just start configuring. Just going to give an IP address to gig00. And you can see on my task manager graph that that first core is still still maxed out. And that's why we have very sluggish response on these routers. Okay, we'll move our task manager graph over a little bit. And let's see if we can ping everything and also show CDP neighbors. Let's see how that looks. So finishing up the configuration on router two. Definitely not the not the most complicated configuration in the world. But it's just a quick test. Okay, that's actually what we're waiting for is this uh, signature verification. That's what's sucking up all my CPU cycles. All right, we'll go back to R1, show IP interface brief. Let's make sure we did everything correctly. Dot one, dot one, 12 and 13. Let's see what happens, show CDP neighbors. Hey, look at that, R2 and R3 looks just like normal, just as if, just like we expect it to. If I ping all two five fives, I should have a dot two and a dot three come back. Come on, baby, you can ping. Looks like we're getting something back. 12.2 comes back, that's excellent. And now 13.3, 13.3, you can do it, you can come back here. 13.3 comes back, awesome. So that proves to you that IOSV will indeed work inside of GNS3. Just have to be a little careful with the QEMU settings. And uh, the initial boot's gonna take a while, but there's nothing really you can do about that. Um, well, you could run this in Linux and it should be much, much better. If you go to preferences, just to recap, under QEMU guest, that guest, x86, 64-bit, remember to pick your image, give it more RAM if you want, Number of NICs, you can leave it at six, you can change it to one, it doesn't really matter. And NIC model is going to be E1000. Don't really need anything else. And then just fire it up. Uh, when you start everything up, you're gonna get these QEMU windows and just minimize those, move them off to the side, whatever. And then you're going to need to console into everything. All right, that's a quick and easy video of running the iOS V VMDK inside of GNS3. My name's Humphrey Chung with